How are you doing everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C, and if you're a subscriber, glad to see you again. Uh, if it's your first time here, you're looking for the latest in bourbon and whiskey news and reviews, you have found the right place. So think about hitting that subscribe button below and also hit that bell notification right next to it so you know when I'm putting out a new video. Today we have one of the most legendary bottles in bourbon lore. It's Elmer T. Lee from Buffalo Trace. Let's get into it. So there are few people in the bourbon industry who managed to attain the longevity needed to become universally recognized as a living legend. Well, Elmer T. Lee was one of those people. Kentucky-born and bred Elmer T. Lee joined the George T. Stagg Distillery as a maintenance engineer in 1949 after serving as a radar bombardier in World War II and returning to earn an engineering degree at the University of Kentucky quickly rising to plant engineer, then plant superintendent, and eventually the shared title of plant manager and master distiller. He is often credited with starting the revival of single barrel bourbons in the 1980s while master distiller of the George T. Stagg Distillery, now known as Buffalo Trace, at a time when nobody wanted to drink bourbons anymore and slowly but surely, he helped bring back bourbon to its glory. Now, even after his retirement in 1985, he still visited the distillery weekly to select the barrels that would be bottled for his self-named Elmer T. Lee bourbon. He continued that practice until his passing in 2013 at the age of 93. So really, if you think about it, buying a bottle of his bourbon meant consumers were getting bottled bourbon personally selected by one of the greatest names in the bourbon world, which adds to the lore of this bottle. His passing led to a bit of a rush in demand on the Elmer T. Lee bottle, as expected. And after all, it was an affordable bourbon at the time, and there was concern that without Elmer to choose the barrels, either the distiller would cease production or the flavor profile would change. So that demand for this bourbon still exists today, and it's become rare in many parts for Elmer T. Lee bourbon to actually find its way to shelves. In today's crazy world of bourbon, you will normally only find Elmer T. Lee relegated to the back room of a liquor store, highly allocated, part of state or store lotteries, and available only on the secondary market. Now today I wanted to revisit this single barrel bourbon that I haven't tasted in a long time and see if the demand and rarity is justified by the flavor of this legendary bourbon. So the bourbon itself is 90 proof and shares its mash recipe with others like Blanton's, Rock Hill Farms, Ancient Age, and Hancock's Reserve, being Buffalo Trace's high rye mash pill, which is set to be about 12 to 15% rye. Now, still on a low scale for what's considered a high rye mash bill these days. Now, it's not age dated, but it's believed to fall anywhere between 8 to 14 years old. This is a single barrel bourbon, and like most single barrels, mine may necessarily taste different from yours or the next person's. All right, guys, so as you can see here, here's a close-up of the bottle of Elmer T. Lee. Um, one of my favorite things is that when you look through the back of the bottle, you could see the portrait of the legendary Elmer T. Lee, kind of uh, as a silhouette in the background. It's one of my favorite parts of the bottle. Now, I haven't had this bottle in a really long time. I haven't had a pour of this. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a bottle. Um, this is, as I mentioned, MSRP is about 35 to 40 bucks. But as I mentioned, it's extremely allocated, difficult to find. Um, it's often between 8 to 14 years old and from Buffalo Trace. So let's get a pour. Let's pop this open. Nice pop. All right, guys, let's sip on some history. All right, guys, so I'm just sitting here swirling the glass around like I normally do, trying to get some air in there. Um, really excited to get back into this bourbon. I haven't had it in so long. Uh, was lucky enough to get a bottle. Um, now, as I mentioned, this is the High Rye Mash Bill, Mash Bill number two from Buffalo Trace. Uh, it's supposed to be only about 12 to 15% rye anyway, and that's still not really a high rye to me, uh, even in today's standards. But other ones that share, like these, Blanton's, um, Hancock's, Rock Hill Farms, even Ancient Age. Uh, I still definitely like to sip on those too. But let's get into the nose and uh, see what I've been missing. So here we go. We have tons of honey and corn sweetness right off the bat. There is a very strong uh, maple note I'm getting on here, which is really nice. It's a maple and vanilla note. Very sweet, a lot of sugary sweetness. 
Now remember, it's only 90 proof, so there's not a lot of alcohol coming through. Wow, it's it's extremely desserty. Very, very sweet. I mean, there's a there's maybe a little bit of hint of some uh, oak there. Maybe even some sweet, some sweet, uh, sweet tobacco, maybe. Yeah, very, uh, extremely sweet on the nose. Let me get really in there and see what we get. Yeah, there's a little bit of some spiciness in there from the rye, but you have to really kind of dig down to get it. When you dig down, then it's when you start getting those citrusy notes from the, uh, from the rye. A little bit of a uh, mintiness there. But really, it's kind of overpowered by that sugary sweetness, the corn. There's, there's definitely a maple syrup character going on in there. Definitely a little bit of the oak. It's a really nice nose, very inviting. All right, let's check the color real quick. So the color is uh, actually a darker than I thought it would be, a really nice darker honey color, sticking to the glass very nicely, being only 90 proof. Really nice color on the glass. All right, guys, so let's go in for the first taste. Here we go, cheers. Mm, first sip, extremely sweet, just like, just like, the, uh, just like the nose. Mm. There is a very there's a very prevalent peach flavor in this. It's very peachy, sugary sweet. Get some corn there on the first sip. Not too much oak. The finish is hitting, but it was the first real sip, so we're gonna have to test that finish as a, as I keep sipping on it here. But so far the first sip was good, but very sweet. So uh, let's go in for the second sip. Here we go. Cheers. Yeah, so still that peach flavor is there a little bit, but now I'm starting, now those rye spices, those rye, those, uh, those rye flavors are starting to take over a little bit. Getting some really nice cinnamon, oak there, black pepper even. Mm. Still that peach and, and maple flavor is a little bit there, but now I'm getting kind of a, a darker raisin note there as well. Really good on the second sip. All right, let's go for another sip, guys. Here we go, cheers. Yeah, this, so the, so the palate, you know, the mouthfeel on it's not, it's not really coating my palate like, you know, like I would like a bourbon to do. But the one thing this bourbon has that's going for it in my mind is the balance of it. It's got such a nice sweetness up front and it's so pleasing with the maple, the peachiness, a little bit of um, definitely that raisin flavor there. But then it finishes... And that oak that wasn't really there on the nose is, is making itself to be known on the back, uh, the back of the palate, along with some cinnamon, some spice, definitely some black pepper there. It's like, the, it's like their rye is super powered or something because it's, it's not a high rye, but it's, it's definitely making itself known, especially on the back of the palate. It's a really nice, uh, really nice balance there. Let's go for one more sip here. Cheers. Yeah, so the finish on it, it's definitely not as not super long, but overall this bourbon, yeah, what this bourbon's really doing is tra it's, it's kind of transforming itself from a super sweet in the beginning, those raisins, peaches, the, uh, the, the sweet corn flavor, and now it's transitioned to more of a, of a rye spice note where you get that on the back of the palate, and then... And then you're getting that little hint of leather in there too. I feel like this would be an amazing uh, bourbon to have with a, with a really nice cigar if you're into that. Um, it definitely just gives you those flavors that can really complement it. Uh, but being 90 proof, the sweet, the spicy, those leathery uh, notes in it, it's just a really interesting sipping bourbon. And I just wish it was a little bit easier to find. All right, guys, so what I've done is I poured a little bit of Blanton's uh, in this glass uh, to go against the Elmer T. Lee. Uh, being the same mash bill, um, I know they're aged differently, different parts of different warehouses. I just want to see how they compare being the same mash bill. Um, see if there are any similarities there or major differences. All right, let's check the noses on this. So, Very similar nose profiles, but the, uh, the Elmer T. Lee is definitely sweeter. Uh, the blends comes off. There's definitely more of a, of a wood and an oak characteristic in there. Yeah, the, the blend seems to have more of a dark caramel type uh, type flavor profile to it on the nose, whereas the Elmer T. Lee comes off very sugary, sweet with those those peaches that I'm still getting on the nose even after a few sips. Let's go to the palate. 
Yeah, so with the blends, you're just getting much more of a, of a darker flavor profile. Um, it's weird because with this particular bottle of Blanton's, the finish on it isn't really staying like it is here. This is staying sweet and just kind of, but definitely more mouth coating. And the Blanton's definitely sticks to my palate a little bit more. Mm, it's really good. Blanton's is always, you know, such a good pour. Let's uh, go against the uh, Elmer T. Lee here. Yeah, the Elmer T. Lee isn't as dark and rich as the Blanton's when it comes to the flavor profile. But the one thing that the Elmer T. Lee is getting me over the Blanton's is the finish on it. The finish on it is way more rye forward. That black pepper, a little bit of a leathery note. I know you do sometimes get that in Blanton's, but in this particular Blanton's, I'm not getting it as much as I am here. Let's go for one more quick sip on each. Yeah, the Blanton's, the Blanton's is definitely coming off as a darker sweetness. Brown sugars, caramels. You're getting the rye spice there. Now I'm getting on the second sip, but it's still not as prevalent as I'm getting in this one. Let's go to Elmer T. Lee a little bit here. Oh, and the finish is not, the finish is longer on the Blanton's, I must say. I mean, I know the Blanton's a little bit higher of proof. This one comes in at 93 proof. It's only three points higher. But it's really making itself known that on the finish a little bit. Let's go to the uh, Elmer T. Lee here. Yeah, it's crazy. Maybe because the Elmer T. Lee is so much sweeter up front that the finish on it is coming up more as a, as a punch. But that black pepper and rye spice that you're getting, a little bit of a citrus note, that leathery kind of finish, it's definitely a little bit more drying too on the, uh, on the palate on the back end. But really good. All right, guys, so in conclusion, I mean, while low in proof than most single barrels, this bourbon still provides a lot of good flavor, especially considering it's been sitting in wood for anywhere from 8 to 12 years. As far as single barrels go, this is a really nice, easy-sipping bourbon. I really don't think the flavor profile will blow you away like other single barrels, like maybe a Knob Creek single barrel or even some of the Henry McKenna bottles. But overall, still delivers a very well-balanced experience, one that kind of changes over time that actually impressed me more than anything. Uh, I can tell you, if this bourbon was still available for about $35 to $40, it would be an absolute steal compared to the other 8 to 10 year old bottles that hit the market at over 100 bucks. Unfortunately, that's just not the reality. So the best advice I could give you guys is that this is not worth, to me, in my opinion, it's not worth the $120 to $160 that I see for it on the secondary market. Um, a lot will pay for this based on the rarity and just wanting to own a bottle of this, and I do get that. But if you're like me and would love to drink a bottle of this bourbon and share it amongst some friends and family, then there are others out there that are way easier to find and give a more robust sipping experience. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. I really appreciate you coming by and watching this review for Elmer T. Lee Single Barrel Bourbon from Buffalo Trace. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, please find me on Instagram, and you can also find me on Twitter. Let me know what you think of this, if you've had it before. And like I always say, it is not about the whiskey, it is the people you share it with. So cheers, everyone, and I will see you next time.